Okay, today we're going to take a look at the insides and the outsides and how it works of one of the most classic robots ever made. This is made by Alps, started in 1961. It had a long run time and there were three different versions. The actual name of the toy is Battery Operated Television Spaceman. But most of us collectors, we just call it the Alps TV Robot. <clears throat> but if you're trying to look it up online and get more information about it, you need to look up the entire word Television Spaceman to get it to come up. Now, the uh, first version, which was the version I had as a kid, was uh, all tin in that the feet are metal, the legs are metal, of course your body and all these parts are metal. The magnifying lens in the chest is actually glass. Arms are metal, of course your claws are some form of plastic. Back of the head metal, important, the battery box covers metal. And the antenna, which is the on-off switch for the toy, was metal. And on a chain so it wouldn't get lost. The uh, functions were numerous for a small sized robot. Besides walking, besides the moving arms, besides the lit moving pictures in the chest, besides a sequencing screeching sound, which turns off and on and varies in intensity, besides color bars moving in the mouth, there's also rotating eyes, gear-driven eyes. <clears throat> so many mechanical effects, so many cool effects put into one little toy. You put the switch in, and here's your picture. You can see they move and they're lit. And there's your mouth. And of course the moving arms and legs. But you're going to want to see how all of that good stuff was done inside. <clears throat> now one of the other versions where they started saving money is they went to all plastic feet. The legs are just shells, they're not uh, load-bearing, so they're all plastic. In fact, a very thin plastic which squishes a lot like a milk bottle or water bottle type thing would. The uh, screen has gotten a little bit bigger, but now it's all plastic. It's not glass any longer. And of course, the antenna, which is the on-off switch, has become plastic. And the battery door on the back has become plastic. <clears throat> the functions remain the same. So if you wanted to see kind of what was going on in there, let's start with uh, some guts from, from an original one. So this has what's left of a metal foot and the metal legs right here. And you can see the, the cranks that drive the legs on either side. And these slots up here at the top of the legs, they're what interface with This is the body back. So here's a part of an arm. You see that control level right there? That lever would go into one of these slots here. So as this leg moves back and forth, that would make the arm swing back and forth. Now this one, the, the paper roll, which is about nine inches long in real life, is missing. But that's okay. It'll help you understand what's going on and be able to see more. There are power-driven rollers <clears throat> on this side, then the other rollers that are around the vicinity are just uh, idle ones that can move freely. Down inside this hole, they would put a light bulb, <clears throat> and that same light not only would light up the pictures that you would see through the magnifying lens on the front, but the light would come up through here and light up the mouth for the uh, color wheel effect that you saw going on in the mouth. This is the screecher, the thing that you heard making the screeching sound. So as this leg part moves back and forth, it tips that piece of cardboard and that little wiper away from that gear or, or towards that gear. So as it hits the gear, you'll hear screeching, and as it's pushed away, you'll hear less. So you, you'll hear it coming and going. So a little sounding device and a screecher feeler built in. Now I think I think I can get this to run a little bit. Uh, one tricky part is trying to... Uh, <clears throat> let's get the camera closer. 
is going to be trying to get my other contact clear up there on the motor. I should have soldered a wire on that to make it easier, but I'm just going to try and touch it without shorting anything out. With any luck. Maybe, maybe not. It's not so easy to, to do. There we go. I should have soldered a wire on there to make that easier for everybody. Okay, another thing you want to notice is this flex drive right here. See my thumbs touching that? That's being driven by the gearbox and it's going up into here and driving these gears and they're what drive the uh, paper roll. Well, I'll show you that on the other one because the other one's got uh, an easier set of wires on the motor. <clears throat> but you can see the basic idea is they've taken a drive right out of the gearbox and soldered in a flex drive. Well, right off here, that little stub sitting there, there would be a longer flex drive with a super tight bend. This is the one that's going to fail and always fails in the robots when there's a problem. That one would come out and bend and come straight up. And that's what's going to drive up in the head. Now this is the got the, the bubble window off, but you can see there's a color wheel and that flex drive would come all the way up to this gear and it would rotate that gear, which would rotate the color wheel. <clears throat> now what likes to go bad in these is, just like so you can see, see on this one how this green is kind of coming loose and sticking off. Well, it was they're crimped in places and then there was also a piece of scotch tape on them from back in the 1961. And uh, once one of these breaks loose and comes out, as this turning around, it'll hang up. And if this big wheel can't turn, but this flex drive is being driven by a gearbox, gearbox down below, what happens is, is that really tight turn that I told you about that comes off here and goes straight up, doubles over on itself into a knot. Once that happens, that's jammed up the whole toy and the toy is not going to work anymore. So uh, not only does the flex drive drive this gear, which hits this little idler, and that little idler then turns the big color wheel, but back up inside the head, that same flex drive then runs this worm gear, which turns this big flat gear, and that big flat gear drives this eye, and this eye drives that eye. So you end up with uh, the rotating eye effect. Very complicated. Works really well though. Um, here is the plastic leg version. It was like one of the second versions where they had gone to all plastic in the legs and the feet. <clears throat> They've even went to plastic on the uh, main motor gear. Gone to a slightly different style motor. But you notice this one still has the paper artwork inside and in fact it still has a little little light bulb inside. You've got your same flex drive that you saw on the other one going up to drive the paper drive and then again here this is where the flex drive would bend and go up to run everything in the upper half. Now this one the uh, squealer isn't on there but here's the shaft that the squealer would sit on and then as this leg crank comes around it would lift and lower the squealer to hit that gear to make the sound. So you won't hear the squealing sound with this one and I, like I say, I think I've got more of a place to uh, to clip onto here. I hope. There we go. So you can see the pictures, how they move around. They're being being driven by the gears that run these rollers, and they pinch the paper. In fact, they're spring loaded. There's a spring right here that pulls that front roller tight against the driven one. To move the paper all the way around, the loops comes back by, and there's that. And like I said, that same light would shine up into the robot's mouth to illuminate that color wheel, which was driven by that other flex. Really a cool mechanism. And, you know, until the uh, 
the color wheel transparencies come loose. These things usually continue to work quite well. They don't really seem to have a whole lot of problems as far as uh, not working right. So there you have it. If you've ever wondered what was inside the Alps TV robot, or by its correct name, battery-operated television spaceman, now you know.